Has you ever taken something apart and get everything you've done putting back together and realized there's a little itty bitty screw from something in your bowl? It's not a good feeling because I've taken a bunch of stuff apart. It could be a, one of a bunch of things. Oh no. Talking about you saw you saw the title probably the picture it is the Boker Plus Lateralus by J B Stout Jason Stout Jason Stout Design so without any further ado you know what time it is turn down that volume because here comes a little bit of music. <laughs> This is Blum Gum. Don't hate, subscriptiate. Uh, this is Blum Gum. He's a great channel. He doesn't do much on YouTube these days, but it would be cool if you would go give him, give him some likes on his videos. He was the reason, really, that I watched Reckless Eating because he was always the funniest when it would come on and he'd be on Reckless Eating with Chris Reckless and all those, and Matt Zion and all those guys. Actually, another channel that probably would get shown up here, here but it's, it's really declining. It's not the same stuff I want to watch as it used to be, but it is a lot of fun. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about the Boker Plus Lateralist, like I said. Now this came in from Tino. I'm not gonna get a lot of time to like carry it and play with it because this was a gift for a friend of his. So um, this isn't gonna get like a heart, like a review of use and all that stuff. Um, so it's just it's just one of those things that's gonna come in. We're gonna take a look at it, just do some overall stuff. I apologize for any noise, guys. I had to have my garage door open. It is hot today uh, in this garage. So like I said. We're gonna take a look at this down at the mat. I will meet you guys down. All right, guys, so what are we looking at? This is the Jason Stout Design Boker Plus Lateralis. Now, this is a really, really nice knife, and it is one of those ones that doesn't, uh, it doesn't break the bank, and you're still not, you're not really slouching or, or giving up on materials too much. Um, so what we're looking at here is a 3. 3.625 inch clip point blade in D2 steel with a cutting edge of 3.375 inches with an overall length of the knife at 8.25 inches. It is carbon fiber and stainless steel, so you've got pretty light carbon fiber. And then a stainless steel frame lock. And you can't really see it too well, but they did a lot of milling to lighten this up. You can kind of see in there, yeah, they've pocketed it out. Not a heavy knife. I would expect in stainless steel that it would weigh more. But let's go ahead and we'll get the scales out because I couldn't find a weight listed. But I did get the blade thickness. So we're going to look at blade thickness. And we're going to look at the weight. So hang on just a second while I get the scale and the caliper. Right, let's go ahead and get the weight first since I have the scale here. That way we can get it out of the way. And like I said, these aren't the most accurate scales in the world, but let's go ahead. In ounces, you're looking at four and five eighths ounces. In grams, that comes in right at 132 grams. Not real heavy, honestly, to tell you the truth. It is not a real heavy knife. Let's go ahead and look at the blade stock thickness. They had it listed as 0.14 on blade stock thickness. Let me get these turned on and let's go ahead and measure that blade stock thickness right here at the spine. 1.32, 1.365, or I'm sorry, 0.1355. I mean, right in that 0.14 uh, range. And let's go ahead, just for just fun, let's look at a behind the edge thickness on this. It's not real super thick behind the edge. Uh, 0 0.0145 behind the edge. So yeah, it's it's pretty thin. And I will tell you, it has this is the factory edge. It has a very aggressive edge, but it does it comes down nice and thin. Blade shape on this, it like I said, it's a clip point. Uh, it's got this big fuller that runs the full length of the blade, and it gives it some very very attractive lines. You've got this this clip point that has um, the swedge and the false edge on it. The big fuller. It comes down right past the jimping. Nice facets. Good looking blade. Boker has been really. I I hate to say it like Boker's one of those companies that I used you just usually they were synonymous with just crappy knives but this just seems to be a pretty good a pretty good pretty well done JB Stout design. Now I've seen other JB Stout designs. I had one that was done as a Chavez collaboration. I didn't like it as much 
Um, this one is pretty good. Pocket clip, in and out of pocket, pretty nice. It comes down this direction. It is not too proud. It doesn't really make a hot spot in the hand at all for me. Jimping on it is, it's large jimping, and, but it's not real, it's not cut real aggressively sharp. If you're in gloves, I guarantee that that's going to grab and catch and be good. Nice, nice forward sharpening choil. Not a full finger choil for me, maybe for others, but just enough that, I mean, it's done well enough that you are off from that plunge. So you got a good distance before it starts to thicken up. That way you're not going to have that ramping, uh, ramping area towards the end where this starts to thicken up, or you're not going to be hitting into your actual plunge with the, uh, with the stones. Carbon fiber, it is, it looks like shredded carbon fiber. Um, it is really, really nicely done. It's not done too polished. Sometimes, sometimes I like the polished carbon fiber, but in this kind of carbon fiber, I like it to just be about like this, just to the point where you start to get that luminescence, just the flash from the other pieces of carbon fiber in there. It does have a lanyard hole and it has been scalloped out and, and, and recessed so that your lanyard can sit flat and it's not going to stick higher than the scales. Really nice thought out. Nice, nice access to the lock bar to disengage it. Not too heavy of a detent. And it does run, as you can see, ceramic detent, ceramic bearings. So this is a fun little knife. Um, would it be a knife for me? I don't think so. I have an issue with this like I have with the Arius. And it's it's nothing against the design. It's strictly just the, the size of my hands and way these are. I have the same problem with the Koenig Arius. Um, it's not a design fault. It's, it's a me fault. Uh, if you guys know how big my hands are, uh, when I get up in here, I get this finger is sitting right here and it just feels like it's pushing my hand down in and it just doesn't feel, uh, the way I really would like it to. Um, I'm sure I would get used to it. It's not that bad and it's not that bad on the areas. It's just that like, it just feels like I'm for, like I'm being forced down into the flipper tab. Luckily it's not sharp. There's no real hot spots on this knife to speak of really, which I'm surprised because when you look at it, it looks really sharp and angular and, and you know, all these corners and facets and everything. It looks like it should be just hotspot city, but it really isn't. And can we do it? Can we? Yes. You can flip it with the fuller. I just, with it being that skinny right there, I have a hard time getting my finger down in there. Cause like I said, I do have above average sized hands. So there you go, guys. This Boker is really, really nice. Um, now, I do know I shot the outro before this because I was having technical difficulties shooting this, and I forgot to put in a price. So out of character, we're going to talk about the price here. Blade HQ, right now, this knife is $79.95. I'm sorry, $79.95. MSRP on it is $139.95. And I'm not going to lie, this is a good deal at $79. That is a really nice knife for $79. And I mean, it's attractive. The only issue I have is it, the D2 steel. Um, I, I would say that I wish they had coated this, but you know, you can always keep it oiled real well. Uh, I personally like if, okay. So you guys know, um, in case anybody wants to know how I keep rust off of knives that are rust prone, uh, there's a couple things you can use. I personally like to just put a couple drops of the KPL heavy because it's a gel and I can smear it around and then it just stays there. It doesn't leak off. It doesn't get on other things. It doesn't run. Like if you put this knife in a case, and it's sitting like this, the oil, like if you're using regular oil, it might run down and pool up in some areas. The KPL Heavy does not do that. It just kind of sticks where you're going. There's other ways to do it. You can cover it. Some people use petroleum jelly um, or fluorinate grease or, or any kind of grease and put on it. Just, you gotta be careful and make sure that whatever grease or oil you're using is not, make sure it's hydrophobic, not hydrophilic, because if it's hydrophilic and it will actually absorb, some oils will actually absorb moisture, you will still get rust underneath so guys i will meet you guys back up for some final thoughts about that guys what i was saying is if it was a little thicker in this area as opposed to like the, that big transition i think for my larger hands it wouldn't have been as bad um it just kind of gives me that pinched feeling like i get with a another great great knife which is the coney garius kind of does that as well it just feels like my hands forced down into the flipper tab when i'm using it so i think i could get by it um this one's not as dramatic but, you know, a lot of people kind of balk at a, at a, stone, at a steel frame lock. But, you know, it, it's really not that much heavier than it would be if it was titanium. They did a really good job keeping it light. They did a lot of milling inside. So, yeah, guys, all in all, great, great knife. So, um, as always, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. Tell me why. 
Keep in mind, I've started a three-day-a-week podcast. We may adjust that schedule. It just depends on how taxing that is. Um, a three-day-a-week video podcast here on YouTube. I don't have it anywhere else yet. Uh, it's called Beer and Blades. We do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting at 7.30 Pacific, so you're free to join me there. Today is Monday, the Monday, the what, the, the 9th? Uh, today scheduled is Justin Lair and, uh, from Fiberlight Firestarter, so you've probably already seen that. Great, great guy. If you haven't already watched it, go back and watch it. It was a lot of fun. Um, I haven't done it yet. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's Model Boys Sports Channel if you want. You can join the memberships like 31 people already have where you get early access to all my videos, exclusive giveaways and things like that, depending on your tier memberships. Um, and if you don't want to do that, if you just want to support the channel by dropping a super like, which is basically like a super chat or a super sticker for a video that's pre-recorded, you can do that as well. Plus, I have all kinds of affiliate links down below. My merch store is now open again. Um, there are three items in the merch store, the the the, uh, the sea snake shirt, there is a crazy sharp logoed shirt, and there's a there's a canvas wall hanging that uh, I may purchase one and put it on a wall in the garage just, just because just because it's cool. So guys, I love you all. Take care of yourselves, be good to each other if it's your birthday. Happy birthday. And like he said, like uh, Blumgum likes to say, don't hate, subscriptiate. So Keep it clean in the comment section so I don't have to moderate that. And I will see you guys tonight at 730 and in the next video.